Hello and welcome to Just Do It, a Dewey Brothers podcast. I'm Alex. That's Eric. Eric, what episode are we on? We're on the big one one, brother. So we're sitting at what I can only imagine is too crazy for everyone to handle. In fact, we actually do not have the license for more than one one. So we're just going to have to call this one 11. Like yeah, spelled we're just out. Have to wing it. Remember, guys, eleven completely different from uh, one f- double. You know, y- you know what I mean. Double one or eleven, but we're right. we're gonna spell it out because we didn't. We accidentally did not uh, have the time to uh, certify us for more than one one in the title. Yeah, Eric, that's my bad. I was supposed to certify us, and it got lost in the post office. Like, right as I was going to put it in the box, it just got, like, carted away on me. The box was carted away. Yeah. Like, they just, they picked up the blue box and just took it. I was like, what the They said, no, no, no. Yeah. No post for you. But, But, uh. Good news. What's the good news? The good news is we went and got a hold of a rep for one of our sponsors. Oh, really? Mm Mm-hmm. You should you should get him in the call right now. Uh, beep boop beep 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 beep. Hello, Butter Dogs, are you there? Hi, yeah. Uh, this is this is Butter Dogs. I'm a rep for uh, Second Cheapest Helmet. Glad to be in the cast. We do love Second Cheapest Helmet. Um, what do you got to say about uh, you know, the product and what's going on in your local area? Well, I will say the thing about Second Cheapest Helmets is uh, they may not be light, they may not be aerodynamic. But they are certified by the government to protect you as good as any other helmet. And they're available at your local Walmart and not not many other places as far as I can tell. Just go to Walmart. I've heard that second cheapest helmet has 700% more fashion than their competing brand cheapest helmet. That That is objectively true. Uh, you see, cheapest helmet lacks the, the flimsy plastic visor tacked onto the front. And that flimsy plastic visor is what gives second cheapest helmets that extra bit of panache when you're cycling down the bike path. Absolutely. I've heard I've heard yeah. a lot from uh, professional cyclists that they're they're they always have to stay clear from the cheapest helmet because you know it's cheap and it's it's bound to fall apart. But second cheapest comes with a certified uh, life guarantee of being you know mediocre. I was oh. going to say, a lifetime guarantee is certainly not true, um, <laughs> and our lawyers have been notified. Please do not make that claim. Um, yeah, so what what I found, Eric, is that cheap. the only people that get the cheapest helmet are the underage cyclists. Oh, and of course. So, and, you know, the, the, the kids whose mom got them helmets, that, those are the kids who end up with the cheapest helmets, and you don't want to be looking like them on the playground, you know what I mean, when you're rolling up. Alex, I would like to remind you that you should not make fun of any mothers as per MACC <laughs> guidelines. Uh, I'm just saying, yes. like they, you know, it's all about the protection. You just got to protect them. You got to protect them with the most frugal thing that you can, except if you actually want to get a good, uh, you know, helmet, in which case go with the second cheapest helmet. I mean, once, you know, you make it to college and you have a little bit of cash, right? Like once you're of biking age, then you get second cheapest. Because, like, you're not going to, you got to show everybody you're not just, you know, getting the cheapest. Like, everybody can steal a helmet off of the bike rack when they hop on their bike, you know? That's true. It's very true. Well, Alex, I, uh, I got to say, I think we're going to have a really crowded podcast this week. We got the one and only Butter Dogs joining us. Yeah, we got loads of questions and we, not a lot of time to get there. So, so about, let's hop on our bikes and ride right up on to the main topic. All right. It's a good one this week, Eric. All right. I got to – I'm, I'm going to ask it. Just – I'm really thinking this question is going to bring light to it. But uh, does this topic support corporations' hostile takeovers? Oh, uh, it depends on the corporation doing the hostile takeover. So, Interesting. Yeah. So I, 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 you know, as long as that corporation um, is sticking it to the man, then they're probably in favor. I, I think I would say that our main topic is in favor of a hostile takeover of the man. 
Oh, um, that's that's a little scary. Yeah, well, I mean, members. Uh, I haven't. I, personally, I don't know any of the members of this group, but I, I would say they're definitely. That, that those are the sort of mad lyrics that they would spit out. All right, I, I have a question. Uh, how many bumper stickers would you say are on the back of this topic's car? Ooh, I'm not sure. My hmm. man uh, Jerul probably, who's one of the members, probably has no bumper stickers on the back of his car. But why Kim the three figure and uh, Stoneface are probably just loaded with stickers. So it probably depends on which member you're talking about. All right, all right. So we got a sort of coalition. Um, I've actually heard this... of Ja Rule, but I don't know anything else. Is this some sort yeah, of reggae all, or hip hop group? We all know that Dreddy Kruger loves Kale, so. Where where does this topic fall on the bear spectrum? Um, definitely not polar bear, because that's too white. So I'm going to say grizzly bear, because they're still mean and coming at you. Mean and coming at you, okay. Um, yeah, 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 both their... Uh, both of their albums, Yesterday, Today is Tomorrow, and Black Castle, which dropped in 2006, um, are pretty strong and beefy. beefy pretty albums. strong and beefy. Okay, yeah. okay. I'm as, liking the I'm sound of I would say as strong as a grizzly bear. If this, country, if this topic were to pick a favorite Scandinavian country, mm -hmm. which Scandinavian country and why? Uh, I would say Finland because of Finland's wide acceptance of uh, hip-hop music. Little known okay. fact, everyone in Finland loves hip-hop. And today's That's main topic, Royal Fam, the hardcore hip-hop musical group affiliated with the Wu-Tang Clan. Oh, I, um, was, I was close to guessing a Wu-Tang Clan. He's super clan. big in Finland. Wow. Uh, you, said, you said Nordic country, and they are a Nordic country. I just didn't, was trying to make sure. I meant not I, a well. Country. I was going for Scandinavian, but Nordic mm. also. Yeah, sorry. Oh, you know that that area up there. When after you take the Dewitt Channel, it gets sort of yeah, interesting. Yeah, De uh, Denmark and North. Yes, of course. Yeah. yeah, so that's uh that's pretty cool. What uh what sort of hits did this uh does this group have? Uh, I mean, Timbo King released his debut solo album in 2011 from Babylon to Timbuktu. And uh, like I, I don't know, they 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 are mostly group affiliated with Wu Tang Clan. What what makes That's them affiliated cool. with uh, Wu Tang? Do they have like Inspector Deck or or Jizza appearances on their album? Uh, I do not know because I have not listened to them. I just found the uh, Wikipedia oh, they, page. They, so yesterday, today is tomorrow. Features production from RZA. Okay, yeah. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah. Um, so one might one might call them Alex. Wait, wait, in... Alex, Alex, yeah. wait. One might call them the second cheapest Wu Tang Clan. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> that would be that would you, be Royal Fam right there. Yeah, you can I, uh, you can. That. As a matter of fact, we probably have to watch out now, but that's okay. We deeply uh -oh. respect their music. I mean, we can say they're certainly not the Wu Tang Killer A's, but they've probably qualified as Killer B's. Mm -hmm. That's yeah, the primo. All right, with that, with that uh, music, um, musical topic out of the way, Eric, is it time to segue into our our next segment? I mean, music on mu music on music. We're getting into the area where it's getting freaky, freaky, and the music is just rolling. And you know what the music is? It's original pieces. What are we doing for original works this week, Eric? So I know by a large demand that reggae is making a comeback. Mm, gotcha. I mean, our contract says that you can't, we can't repeat song genres, but I, I mean, if the people, we got to give the people what they want. Well, I remember we got into this business to give the people what they want, not to shill out to some corporate entity mm -hmm. that wants to, you know, make us not who we truly are so i think we need to give the people what they want so so you're saying we stick it to the man and bust out another reggae bit something that you know is just super powerful and got the reggae way of life all right 
uh, Butter Dogs, you have any reggae reggae lines? You ready to hop in here? Uh, I can't. I can't say I do. I'm. I'm gonna let you two do your thing until I'm feeling the vibe. Um, All right. Just like everyone, to remind everyone that ska came before reggae and is thus superior. <laughs> actually, I believe that ska pre it. Uh, it actually post dates reggae. Ska ska came before reggae. Yeah, I'll, I'll fight you on that. All right, looks like we got some fighting. As long as you can do it to the tune of reggae, then right, I'm down. Drop those fresh beats. I just got them out of the garden. They're going bad. The beats are coming in hot, brother. All right, man. Welcome to the island. Oh, yeah. We feel in the groove tonight. So I was walking down the street, minding my own business, and then I came across a witch doctor. And that witch doctor, he said to me, he said, even though you're in Jamaica, there is no way you'll see. And I said, no, witch doctor, no. You don't want to take my sweet berries from me. And he said, nay, I'll take the berries. But in the future, you say? Oh, he said, no. I said, no, you can't do any blow. I said, mon. What you talking about? I just want to use some blizzards. Then the witch doctor replied, Oi man, I'll be placing a curse on your berry patch now. And the witch doctor chanted and chanted and said, Oh, wicka, wicka, coconut tree, that is where I'm going to be. And then one day when the berries die, I'll be there sitting in the sky. I said, hey, man, ain't no worries, because berry season was three weeks ago. But you see, young snappin' Rastaman, I'm here to take your berries for all the land. No more berries for you, and that is what I do. I said, hey, mon, that's okay, because I've moved on to throwing zucchini. Oh. Well, the witch doctor was very perplexed. He had never known anyone to not have this sort of context. That's right. They are long and strong. Oh, man, they help me run along. I make this... the race zucchinis today. If you want to go fast, just put one in your pants. The race zucchini, long and strong. Everybody know it's going on. That's right. This is our reggae song. We got to celebrate the little zucchinis, even though they're six foot three. Just like my magnum dong. Okay, we're done now. <laughs> well, wow. oh, that was good. That was really good. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I, I was trying to get in some sort of downhill reference, but you really went back to the berry patch, man. Well, I had to set up the, uh, you know, the preface to the story, which is that the witch doctor comes and places a curse on the man's berry patch. Mm -hmm. But the the moral of this story, which we're legally obligated to have uh, for all of our songs, is that if your berry patch gets cursed. You just got to roll with the punches and think on the bright side because you're growing massive race zucchinis. Of course. For all our viewers that don't know what a race zucchini is, it's a zucchini that you put into your trousers to, to, uh, the to go faster. Sure. It helps with the arrow. It's oh, yeah, arrow. It's, it's very arrow. Negative it's arrow. It's all arrow. Yeah. Uh, 
some people will say zucchinis are not berries. Um, those clearly, those people have never been to Jamaica. <laughs> yeah, they they definitely haven't smoked nearly enough trees to uh... enough coconut trees, if you will. Exactly. Um. Yeah. So, folks, that's all I gotta say. Is reggae's back, and it was uh, something. Yep, that's it. So <laughs> next. We are rolling into the long anticipated, arguably the high point of the podcast. Questions is it the- Eric talking? Oh crap! It's questions from the internet. Yeah, Drat. No, exactly. No one likes. Well, to talk. I this is going to be questions? awkward because I found a great question. Oh, okay. Reel that bad boy in for us. This uh, this user Man Rajbeer is okay, asking Man Rajbeer. What is something in life absolutely no one, in all caps, wants? Butter dogs? Throwing this one to you. I mean, I'd I'd say there's a lot of things that that no one in life wants. But this is absolutely, like... I was like, not even, so... The creme de la creme of bad things. I'm I'm a little scared to say this, because the the MACC is watching. But... Okay. we, We were discussing earlier that... If it exists, someone has a fetish for it. So I would I would say that there isn't actually anything that no one wants because for anything you can imagine, that's that's someone's fetish. At least someone is intrigued by it. Yeah. So I could say that no one could ever possibly want Eric's sweaty, smelly, disgusting, disfigured, horrendous, monstrous, sort of gangly, terrifying multiple infections, gangrenous, falling off, um, pasty white, sweating everywhere, his, his feet body. like that. But someone's yeah. into those feet. I, I'm, I can just say it. So Someone might no. be in- interested. Okay, yeah. No, I, I, forever, all the viewers out there, my feet are that gross. But, um, yeah, they're not great. They're not great. <laughs> Um, um, but if anyone's interested, he he is selling pictures. That is <laughs> true. That is true. It's a little side hustle, Eric's been. Doing. It is. Um, I need I need the side hustle for uh, you know, beer money and whatnot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's see. Pods don't pay like they used to, so he's got to. Pod does hustle. not pay. Our ever since we lost the uh, what was it? Almost seal of approval. Our uh, our sponsors have not been giving us enough. Homegrown hops is the only one sticking by us. Yeah, uh, I have a representative from Second Chief of Pops. I will concern. I will confirm. We're we're not paying you much. It's not a lot. <laughs> we know. We sent you a couple of helmets and uh, whatever we found in the couch. Although yeah. this is a, that brings up a good point. So, what is something in life absolutely no one wants? It's to lose their sponsors. That's true. I mean, that's that's tough. Although, unless their sponsor is you know a known you know serial murderer. I it's mean, it's money. Not though. great. It's money, though. You're right. Money is money, and yeah, it's R- really pretty taking, easy. Not to... taking money from a serial murderer would be bad. It's probably like, you. What? You should be sponsored by only serial murderers, and that's that's doing the <laughs> best, most good that you can. What I mean, kind of serial is true... it murdering? Yeah, I mean, can is you it murdering? A true crimes podcast that was sponsored by only murderers. Pretty good. That would be really good. Yes, exactly. But if they lost those sponsors, it'd be it'd be very telling of the podcast. It's kind of scary. No I, one I don't wants think that. It'd be as bad as double cancer, though, which is when oh. your cancer has cancer and they're working together. They're not they're not canceling each other out. That's fine. Well, well but okay. It's like a symbiotic infinite cancer manifold. No, no, no. That's yeah. got nothing on bonitis. I think I think we we stumbled into it. It's we, no one wants bonitis. No matter That's how true. bad Eric's feet are, somebody wants them. It's true. Losing your sponsors oh. hurts, but it's not bonitis. It, it's bonitis. Nobody wants bonitis. That's of course the terrible disease that all of your bones sort of do things that uh just you know you die. It's bonitis. I think all your bones break and then you die. But I they mean, instantaneously the only break. option is to freeze yourself until the future. Where there will be a cure in the future. So it's okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, Alex, you have another question? Because bonitis, no one wants that. Yeah, Manraz beer, it's, uh, it's definitely bonitis. 
So Jenny at Jenny Dung. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Actually, I don't. Um, Whoa. <laughs> Very rude. All right. Keep going. Keep going. Anyway, Jenny. Is it, Jenny asks, um, is it too early to buy a Christmas tree? Well, it depends. The main reason you don't buy Christmas trees that early is because they're hard to maintain and their needles fall off and they die. But if you're planting it, then you're go ahead, do it. Uh, do you plant trees in the fall or the spring? I think you plant them in the fall, right? Uh, can you just uh, plant trees yes. like whenever? No, no, you plant them in the fall because that's when uh, like most trees drop their acorns and whatnot. Well, mm. I think you plant them in the fall, and then they go dormant in the winter, and then they get get to grow again by themselves. And then they they spread new life onto the world, and then they get picked and plucked because we are maintaining this baseball field that those dirty seeds are hopping on, and we gotta kill them all. I mean, it, it's too early to buy a Christmas tree if you want your Christmas tree to have needles, but if you're going with a Halloween look, I think if you bought a Christmas tree now. It would be oh, it would really look, spooky by, it by would look October 31st. Spooky and dying, and yeah. the needles would probably turn orangey to match the Halloween vibe. Right. Yeah, that's... So, you know, do whatever you feel is right in your heart. It's very circumstantial in this case. And um, dogs, got it. Have you seen any people buying Christmas trees down in Manchester? Um, I certainly haven't seen any people selling Christmas trees. So if you're interested, it may be, it may be difficult to, to buy one right now. Um, but that doesn't stop you from, from stealing a Christmas tree. Mm -hmm. Um, really, I can only advocate stealing from, stealing from state parks. Um, just as a good thing, you don't have to put it up. Just, just steal from the government. It's good. Oh, they, ha they haven't coated them in frozen raccoon urine yet because it's not cold enough to freeze. That's a good. Oh. That's a good thought too. So if you're planning on borrowing a Christmas tree from a state park, now is the time. It's time to go. Let's go, everyone. Get your axes and chop down your local Christmas tree now, because you don't want any raccoon urine on your Christmas tree. So yeah, I guess the conclusion is it is too early to buy a Christmas tree, but it's not, it's it's definitely not too early to steal one. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. It takes that Sounds good. from our man Jesse and run with it, Jenny. Eric, okay. Any more questions um, on the internet? I have I have one pretty quick one we can dive into, and this is by George the Cat Ten. And George the Cat's asking, what's the worst compliment you have ever got? I know for me it was when Alex said that uh my feet were unique and unlike any other bef that he's ever seen. <laughs> That was the worst compliment you've gotten? Was well, the best I, that I said I would pay 35 cents for a picture of them? <laughs> well, that's a, that is a compliment because I – see, it, it hurt because I knew he was patronizing me, but he was also putting it in light saying, hey, no one else has feet as disgusting as you. <laughs> so pretty good. Have you uh, received any other weird compliments? I mean, George the Cat 10, once I was getting ready to do a uh, 5K down in the park in Potsdam. And someone told me that is the smallest racing zucchini I have ever seen. And, well, that, you know, that just it made me feel bad because. How is that a compliment? That just sounds like bullying. Yeah, he was trying to like tell me after he he followed that up with, but it looks really shiny. Oh, that's and, good. And you know, symmetrical. And I was like, but I just wanted a big gangly. You know, I just I wanted a quality aerodynamic, uh, racing racing vegetable. zucchini, of course. And mine was just you know it wasn't quite the the size I needed it to be for that extra thirty seconds on my mile my mile splits. That is tough. Yeah. Man, that he was hurts. trying to tell me how arrow it was, and I was like, but the bigger they are, the more arrow they are. And he exactly. Mm -hmm. You know? No no one has actually studied the physics and the uh drag behind uh racing zucchinis, but 
it is a known fact that the only way to actually get a PR or a world record is by having a racing zucchini. Exactly. I mean, all the top athletes are have some sort of vegetable in their trousers. I've seen eggplants. I've seen bananas. I've seen uh, the occasional Coke bottle, which is good for like a... Uh, that's performance enhancing drug territory. No synthetics well, here. I, I was going to say that's good for a third place, but it's not as high quality as a uh, zucchini or uh, You need other. that produce fresh, man. That I, is I true. I don't trust anyone but major to deliver quality aerodynamics. Exactly. So That's thousands fair. of years to perfect the perfectly aerodynamic zucchini. I was going to say that birds are a great example of nature knowing how to do aerodynamics, but we all what know. What is a bird? That, exactly. That, that birds are A, birds. terrible at flying. Have you seen and that? government drones. Place? And the answer is because they were designed by the government. They are government drones. So, That's why they are not as efficient as they probably could be. Now, bats, on the other hand, that is nature. Genius. Genius. I mean, beautiful. The, the Absolutely epitome. the epitome of what natural selection has to offer. I'm pretty sure the giant fruit bat is the fastest animal on the planet in a dive. Uh, I would believe that. It also is the cutest. Those They're things are adorable. cute. They're adorable. Um, yeah, so there's a lot of bad things people can say to you out there, but don't let them hurt your feelings because I know – that all of our viewers out there are like the mighty giant fruit bat. Just a perfect specimen. I mean, absolutely adorable and not the least bit terrifying. No way. No way, no how. Uh, are bats the next sponsor? Can we? I'll, I'll, I'll make some calls. Okay, uh, you, can, you can call and try and see if we can get Big Bat um, on the uh, podcast. Um, so there's actually a question in the comments of last video they wanted to ask the question how many is too many eggs i think it depends on the egg type but i'm going with a firm 17 17 eggs is too many eggs too many eggs it's too many ostrich eggs and it's too much row <laughs> i've been i've been told that it's never okay to put all of your eggs in one basket and the only baskets i have can only fit a max of 612 eggs. So I'd assume that if I had more than that, I would have That's to put them. Bound. Yeah, I would. I mean, you have to put them in other baskets. So you need I'm going. Well, I'm going that, with 612. Upper bound because you need, you need at least half of that, right? Because well, oh, you, you don't want to put them all. Eggs, so you need to put them in at least two baskets. Yes, because you cannot put them all in the same basket. Right. So you need like 1,200 eggs would be too many eggs. Yeah, that's true. Uh, there is... baskets, how many baskets have you seen? Because we need to that, – that contributes to the maximum number of eggs. Although I'm still a firm believer that it's 17. Have you ever seen more than 17 eggs in one location? I don't think I ever have. Well, I mean, I eat five dozen eggs every day just to become, you know, as large as a barge. So I think is anything just under small? five dozen is probably a little too few eggs. And like – who wants to buy their eggs every day? So maybe like every three days I go for three times five dozen. So it's a lot of eggs. There's definitely a limit on too many. Uh, they just start right. to go bad or you don't have places to store them. But it's it certainly, I, I would say, no no less than a thousand um, eggs. Is, is, the, is the too many egg limit? Yeah, it's, it's definitely yeah. above a thousand, but probably not by too much. I think that matches up with Eric notice that um, 613 eggs fit into his basket. And I, so, I did say 612. You, 612. Sometimes you can fit the so you 13. Two baskets would be your maximum, right? Like minimum. So like about 1,000 eggs. That's like 1,200 uh, eggs. Yeah. Yeah. So I'd say about 1,000 eggs. Yeah. That seems reasonable. Wait, butter dogs. I have a question. This brings up another important question. If you are saying you're as large as a barge, you don't live on the shores of Lake Lamarge, do you? I can neither and confirm nor deny. Have you ever heard of the cremation of my man Sam McGee? Again, I I plead the fifth. Okay, great, perfect. That means he's guilty. That is not what that means. Well, unless that's... it's an egg-related crime. I demand a lawyer. 
Okay. Um, our poor, innocent, mostly innocent uh, correspondent here. Entirely innocent. I've been framed. Needs to not talk about this anymore. So we'll talk about the perfectly legal and there's no sus suspect suspicious business going on in the world of professional bull racing and marble riding. That's right. Alex, I think I'm going to well, have to let you in on... Uh, on the current standings of the PBR. Yeah. So we got we got our boy Jose Vitor Leme just killing it in the standings. Last week we had the Bull Nanza, uh, which was just it was spectacular. The Bulls were they were ready. It was all about the Bulls. So the Bulls were they were bucking, they were feeling good, they were going wild last week. And uh it was it was a great great showing by a lot of bulls. I'm legit too. Great week. Hocus pocus. Good week. But the real cram de la cram this week was a smooth operator. Mm -hmm. So smooth operator. He was bucking bucking people left and right. It was it was it almost looked as if something wasn't right. And um. It, it started to dawn on me when I'm Legit 2 got up there. And uh, it, was, it was a little wild because something about him looked like uh, he was taking performance-enhancing drugs. Mm -hmm. That's all I'm, I'm going to say. Two, taking performance-enhancing drugs? This is, this is just, this is very, like, you know, this is, this is just my opinion. I don't think he is. I don't, uh -huh. don't want to say any, like, allegations against him or anything. But... The bull looked uh, pretty wild, and uh, for some reason, he had a a little ball, a little container of uh, pills next to him that uh -huh. said Alex DeWitt. Well, I wouldn't label my performance-enhancing drugs with my own name, so it doesn't sound. Oh right. no, no, that's that's who it was made out to. Apparently, it was shipped to a uh, to your address. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah, that makes sense. So obviously, I'm I. It, it could mean anything, but mean anything. with uh with last week's bull Nanza, we got uh the the rider standings are as follows: uh, Jose Leme number one, Yao Ricardo number two, Jess Lockwood number three, Colton Jesse at fourth, and rounding out the top fifth, Dalen Swearingen. But All right. you don't care about the riders. You care about the bulls. I really do. I need to see how this I'm legit who do guy is doing. So I'm like, okay, this is wild. So we all know about the untimely death of air support. Right. However, he is still tied for first in a three-way tie with smooth operator and chiseled. Okay. So then we come down to fourth place with hocus pocus. Really? Uh -huh. It magical bull, and his name is aptly named. And then uh, we have tied for fifth, Pookie Holler, and I'm legit too. All right, fifth ain't bad. Fifth ain't bad. We'll take fifth is not bad. And I mean, with we're about halfway through the season, so air support can't stay up there forever because uh, <laughs> of obvious reasons. And uh, so, I think I'm legit too's got potential if yeah. if he stays away from those uh, those, those prescription. Yeah. The and performance of enhancers. Performance enhancing applications. The Marble League is over. And it's boy, over. Boy, were the last two events hard to watch. Our heroes, the Raspberry Racers, proceeded to get 15th and 16th and drop three spots in the standings to a respectable ninth place. You know, that's oh, okay. No. They were there. They did it. Eric, I was really rooting for the Raspberry who, Racers. Yeah, I know. Do you remember who? Uh, this podcast was pooling behind. It's fairly certain that we are a Raspberry Racer uh, friendly podcast. I'm for the Raspberry Racers. That's my team. But you remember, I know we, we also support at the very beginning. We said they are a surefire bet. We said the balls of chaos. Did we not? No, we said the balls of chaos were a terrible bet. And delivering, <laughs> they are down at fifteenth place. Okay, okay, that sounds about right. <laughs> Sorry, weatherman, your balls of chaos aren't doing great. No, Eric, we said back at the very beginning, watch the savage speeders. They are a oh, late bloom right. marble, and in the that end, right. they are going to bloom. They well, are. In 
events 11, 12, and 14, they got two silvers, two golds, and a silver, which put them in striking is... distance for event 15 and 16. Event 15 was the Aquathon. Oh, thing. they're good. They're good Aquathoners. Uh, half racetrack, half water, all chaos. And the Savage Beaters won, giving them 25 points. Oh, my points. goodness. The Savage Speeders. Going into the marathon, that means they were ahead of your number one O Rangers. So, mm-hmm. Savage Speeders, mm-hmm. O Rangers. Mm-hmm. Going into the final event, event 16, the marathon. This was a 15 minute enduro marble race. Oh, okay? that is they a were wild. On the Marbula One race course, it went forever. It was like 13 minutes. And when the dust finally settled, the O Rangers didn't do it because just before the race, they washed all of the substances that were on the marbles off of them. And I think this may have affected the O Rangers. Um, uh, uh, wow. So I just sort of like quality control check. I just hope that that water did not go into the public, uh, <laughs> you know, water supply because there's definitely nothing, you know, poisonous no on those waters. no suspicious performance enhancing specialized, really toxic lubricants in there. You know, there no was a suspicious bottle in the O-Rangers locker room with the name Eric DeWitt on it. What? <laughs> I I plead the That's fifth, as one true. butter dogs um, might say. I, I know a good lawyer. Heard, I also heard <laughs> you. that Tangerine has reported getting radiation sickness, despite not being um, the marble that was in the the marathon. Oh yeah, sounds about right. That so, that uh, is know, a wild one. Hopefully, hopefully, you know, in the the marble events to come, he'll he'll be all right. But the marble, they only got five points. The Rangers and the Savage Speeders got seven, keeping them in the lead. The Savage Speeders won the Marble League with a respectable second place from the O Rangers. Silver, I mean, that's really good for former champions of the Marble League back in twenty eight seventeen, I think. Yeah, and yeah. the yeah, always strong by the O Rangers, Eric. Solid bet. Uh, followed up by the Mini Maniacs, who just eclipsed the Midnight Wisps in the very last event to grab third. So that's it for the Marble League. Um, it was exciting. Held on to your straps and always trust the Savage Speeders. Just like we said, I mean, we're pretty good at that whole, uh, you know, we know we know sports when we see them. The Do It Brothers, we got, we got you covered. Hopefully we'll see what the next Marble event is, and hopefully all of our favorite teams will be there. Uh, the morals of this story are Eric picks good teams and don't bet on the balls of chaos. That is, you heard it here first, folks. And uh, all I can I say to that last it. point, try and stop me. <laughs> <laughs> wild card, baby. <laughs> oh, wild I mean, card. They're a good way to make a quick buck, but then you're going to lose it all. <laughs> Just ask our other correspondent, Weatherman. So with that, I think it's time to finally thank our sponsors, Eric. I would like to thank the Marble League for being so riveting and exciting these past uh, however many weeks it was. That's It's been a wild ride, ups and downs, twists and turns, and those marbles are phenomenal. No average marble can do what those famous marbles do. They are athletes on their own. I would like to thank Canoe Beer for making this podcast well lubricated and exciting. Canoe Beer. Um, I got to thank Christmas trees. You can't buy them, but you can still acquire them even in August. Christmas trees. Uh, I'll obviously shill for second cheapest helmets. They are not the cheapest helmets. And they are approved by the government to save your life. Generous support from Homegrown Hops. We will eat your Christmas trees. Homegrown Hops will grow on everything. Homegrown Hops. It's very true. With that, it is time to wrap up this one and then another number that's the same number episode. It's 11. Just do it. It's 11. We, we aren't allowed to put two ones in there, but we are allowed to have E-L-E-E-V-E-N spelled out. Exactly. So Although with that, everyone's going to see it already. It's in the title. 
Well, it's fine. They'll, they'll, they'll just have to check the description. Which right here is highly, highly quality reading material. It is With that, the best. Go out there. Get those Little League feels in tip-top condition. It's fall ball the way, baby. And fall after that, ball. Then it'll be winter, which is a perfectly good time to fix your Little League fields. Oh, you always got to fix the Little League fields. And it's finally cooled off enough to make running legal. So get and out there. Bearable. And go try to run. You don't don't have to go far. I'm just saying maybe like 3K, 5K. Try it out running. Just just try. Maybe like 10 steps. And that's that'll be good. And while you're out there exercising and fixing little league fields and or fixing front yards. Yeah, make sure that whatever you do, for the love of God, man, just send it. Just send it, bro. Yeah, <gasps> we're sending it. Whoa! I thought it was pretty good. I think we did it. You're going to edit I that think... bad boy after I send you the link? Oh, it's going to be a very rough edit, but yes. How many stars are outside your window right now? Yeah, yeah, the dipper's the dipper. Uh, do, 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 do. Uh, how do I get Craig out of here? Craig, we don't even pay you. Get out of here. This is, this is great post-production content. I don't know what you're talking about. Only the best. <laughs>